Hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the New World Order, welcome to Hapanwo, Chiefy. I'm going back to London and back to Greenwich, skeptics in the pub. Last time I went there, I th it was to see Professor Karen Douglas. And now, I'm going for a very different reason to see somebody very different indeed. Well, I've got a nice uh, front seat on the coast today. And the sun is setting in the distance. It's about half past three. Let me tell you a bit more about where I'm going. Right, well the event I am going to see is this one. What every parent needs to know about Steiner schools. And this is at Greenwich Skeptics in the pub again. And it's uh, Wednesday, January the 9th. And the speaker is this chap with a very, very smiley, cheerful face. Andy Lewis. Now that, this is a guy who actually spoke at Oxford Skeptics in, Skeptic in the pub once actually. And I'll include links in the description box to my report on that. So that's, let's have a look at what all this is about then. Mm. So, um, we can, uh, we can, let's scroll down a bit on this. All right, also talk about, in the last, the last decade, I've seen several new religious movements create publicly funded free schools. Maharishi and Steiner schools are perhaps the most prominent. It is timely to look closely at the origins and belief of Rudolf Steiner, the founder of the occult movement of Anthroposophy. Steiner was a mystic who believed he had direct clairvoyant access to cosmic knowledge. As such, he developed an esoteric belief system based on karma, reincarnation, astrology, homeopathy, and gnomes. <laughs> His vision gave insights into architecture, art, dance, agriculture, medicine, education, science, and diet. His racial hierarchy of spiritual development resonated, resonated in Germany in the early 20th century. Mm. I think Godwin's law is about to be proved correct again. Anyway, let's return to the text. To, um, yeah, to this, his personal belief turned into a worldwide movement. Today we find hundreds of anthroposophically inspired organisations in the UK alone. Everything from there's the Waldorf schools, biodynamic farms, to banks, pharmaceutical and cosmetic companies, charities and cheesemakers. Blessed are the cheesemakers, as Monty Python said. Andy Lewis has been trying to lift the veil on the inner secrets of the movement and will discuss how this secretive movement has a direct impact on public life. Yeah, so let's see what uh, happens. Anyway, let's, uh, let's look a bit more into, the, uh, into what he's talking about. Let's find another source. And this here is Rudolf Steiner and I've done some very, very uh, thorough in-depth research into this man. In other words, I wicked him. Yeah, born February 1861, died March 1925, Austrian philosopher, social reformer, architect and esotericist. Yes, it's, um, he founded the Anthroposophical Movement, which split from the Theosophical Movement, which is famous, um, I think I've discussed it before, the main, um, the, the central, it was one of the central kind of esoteric uh, spiritualist type um, tendencies that existed in the past. Uh, that found as many many people such as uh, uh, Helena Blavatsky, who's an amazing person, um, who actually uh, is 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 uh, one of the founders of this particular faith, and it's extremely interesting. It's it's like a religion, but it delves into things such as paranormal research and, and spiritualism and things like that as well. Now, uh, Rudolf Steiner, as you've just heard, is encouraged is actually. Um, inspired a massive amount of things across the world. Uh, it, its movement is very, very big today. I've read two of his books, actually. Now, um, I'll go into the books in a minute, but basically, he, he is architecture. He's, he's, he was actually an architect, and he, there's several buildings in Switzerland where they're called uh, Gothaniums, which are built in accordance with his principles. And there are many amazing kind of dome-shaped structures with strange co concave walls. They're very, very, they're very, very attractive buildings and very, very odd. But um, there's also medicine, there's also uh, hospitals um, as well, and biodynamic agriculture. And one of the books I read about, I read written by Steiner, was about this kind of um, agriculture and this particular kind of farming. And it has some unusual ideas. For example, the farming tools have to be made out of wood. So hoes, spades, forks, and, and rakes, everything like that has to be made out of wood. Which... I mean, he does explain why that is. It's to do with energy and things like that, life energy. Uh, 
Of course, it would mean they wouldn't last very long because they, they wouldn't last as long as metal tools. But he said everything they has to be made out of wood. And things like that. Um, there's a famous video. I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it in the background links. But um, they store man manure in these in cow horns. It looks like strange, sort of like disgusting ice cream cones. It's really, really weird. But that's one of the things they do in this biodynamic agriculture. And there's um, anthroposophical medicine, which is uh, there. There was I used to read a magazine called Caduceus, which talked about this. Um, it's a form of alternative medicine, as I said. Um, and it, it's regarded as quackery by the big pharma institutions, so it's uh, probably very interesting and probably real. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so if I ever get sick, you know what to do. Um, you, mistletoe is used for, for certain things, things like that. Um, so that's, that's, I think, is a very, very interesting, another interesting element of Rudolf Steiner. So where we're particularly um, looking at now, where we're, this is the area we're particularly looking at at the moment, and that is Waldorf education. Now, um, I actually went to the Findhorn Foundation, and I'll include a link in the description box to my experience there. And the Findhorn community is a, kind of like a new age alternative community in Scotland. I, went to, I spent a week there just to see what it was like. Uh, they, uh, very, very interesting it was too. They've got a Steiner school there. Um, now, this is... Um, based on the educational philosophy of Rudolf Steiner and it talks about it strives to develop pupils intellectual artistic and practical skills in an integrated holistic manner they do things such as dancing called eurythmy and that's not to be confused with eurythmics the Dave Stewart Annie Lennox rock duo from the 80s eurythmy is a special kind of dancing and they do all sorts of other things they have all kinds of other ideas which I don't completely understand and um, this is uh, it's it is controversial for reasons that um, that Andy Lewis I'm sure will go into in this particular talk, which is um, which I, I think you'll find very interesting when I do my report on it. But there are lots there's lots of these Waldorf schools. I mean there are there are they're very very widespread. The picture you can see is Michael Hall School, which is in Sussex in the UK, and um, there there are over 1,200 of these across the world in 67 countries. And um, there's a number in Britain, uh, which many of them are private and fee-paying, but s two or three, three actually, have actually um, come under the state system, so they're getting state funding. And I think this is Andy Lewis's gripe. I I've got to think this is what he's going to rant about, which is um, be interesting to see what he has to say. Um, so uh, I think the uh, we should go there, shouldn't we? Yeah, definitely. Let's go. Let's have a look. Then again, I've just had a thought. Maybe I shouldn't. There is actually another one I can go to. Because, um, of course, there are four sceptics in the pubs in London. I didn't realise this. There was the original sceptics in the pub, which was the first one I went to. And then there were more. There was a new one started called... Um, well, it split from the original sceptics in the pub. That was the Westminster sceptics in the pub, which was started by David Allen Green, who um, you have to go back quite a long way in her Panwell history to, to hear about him. But he's known as Jack of Kent. I think I still have a link on the original on the main blog to his uh, website. He split from the original Skeptics in the Pub, and he started Westminster Skeptics in the Pub, which eventually became Westminster Skeptics, probably for some legal means, some legal problem. And then there was a Soho Skeptics in the Pub that started, and then Greenwich Skeptics in the Pub, which is the one I most often go to, which is odd because it's the furthest east, it's the furthest away in our, from West London, which is where I always arrive. But the original Skeptics in the pub is still going. They're holding regular meetings. And this is the speaker at the one this Monday rather than going this Wednesday. I could go this Wednesday to the one in Greenwich and hear Andy Lewis talking about the Steiner schools. Or should I go to this one instead? This is on Monday, January the 7th. This is, this is Paleo Fantasy and Alien Contact. Well, Alien Contact sounds interesting, doesn't it? Uh, but it's uh, co but it's uh, let's have a look. It's not quite what it appears to be when it comes to alien contact. This is how we misunderstand the ancient world. All oh, right, I see. So anyway, this is um, a talk by Dr. Stacy Hackner, and that's her there, uh, Dr. Stacy Hackner. And what's she going to have to talk about? This is at the Monarch Bar. It's, it's actually not such a good venue, actually, as the Greenwich one. Um, right, what should we talk about? We often see the past through the lens of media, who take great leaps with facts. <coughs> oh, yeah. 
Do you imagine cavemen going out to club a bear while cave women stayed at home with the kids? Did you learn in school that the Greeks invented civilization? Do you believe that aliens built the pyramids? When you see the image of apes evolving into man, do you stop to question the idea that it represents a progression to the ultimate goal of contemporary Western civilization? These are all myths about the ancient world perpetuated by the media, uninformed pseudoscientists, and sometimes outright racists. Oh my goodness. Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be fun. The way we teach history tends to focus a model of humanity that is reinforcing 1950s white gender roles and reproducing capitalist patriarchy. I'll discuss a few ways in which a common conception of the past doesn't add up. Why we've come to think of history in this biased way and how we can continue to question and correct these misunderstandings. Right. Dr. Stacey Hackner is a bioarchaeologist. My goodness, I've never heard of those. Focusing on ancient activity patterns in Sudan and diseases in 19th century Cyprus. She has excavated human remains in four countries and lectures at UCL and Glyndua University. Um, she has also worked in public engagement at UCL museums and science festival booths where she has learned to battle conspiracy theorists. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe, should I go to this? What do you reckon? I mean, do, do you think I should, or do you think that I might not be welcome there? Do you think I don't? Uh, the atmosphere might be poisoned by my toxic masculinity, my whiteness? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't go to this. But then again, when I think about it, like, I'm always ranting and I'm always moaning about cultural Marxists and things like that. Well, I've got to actually go and talk to the cultural Marxists and listen to what they have to say, don't I? I think, actually, I think I'm going to go to this one instead. I'm going to go to the Monday one at uh, Chalk Farm. And... <coughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll go to the Greenwich one, don't worry. OK, I've uh, made it at the Vic station, and I've got to go in there, because my good friend and comrade Colin Walford is waiting in there for me. Uh, we're going to go there together. I borrowed a book of his, actually. I've got it in my bag, I've got to give it back to him. So that's another thing, so uh, that's my next port of call. I think you'll be in uh, in the pub in the station, the Witherspoons. You can always find Colin in the nearest Witherspoons if you're looking for him. This is Victoria Station, so where's Colin? Ah, Witherspoons, he'll be up there somewhere. Apparently it's quite cheap up there, you know, that's quite nice. It's a grand station, actually. Is a postwoman. And this, if you remember, I was here actually a couple of weeks ago when I went to Gatwick. Do you remember? I've got to go over there. That's it. Some stairways. Yeah. I do like the, um, the the architecture. They keep the old type architecture. They don't um, they don't spoil it and change it into something modern, which is something I like. Well, I'm here in the Witherspoons at Victoria Station. I'm here with my good friend and comrade, Colin Wolford. You know him very well, don't you? <laughs> He's a regular, isn't he? Well, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to head for the venue. I'm going to use my new Go Faster Strike phone. And Colin's got his as well. For the first time, we're on even, well, sort of even footage for phones. And so we're going to find our way to the venue. Um, and it um, should be fun. Happy New Year to everyone, by the way. Oh, thanks, Colin. Yeah. Now, this isn't David Attenborough's latest uh, film of the Inside and Anti. We are actually in London, and everybody around us is running. Yeah. <laughs> they are running. Look at this. Look at them. Look at them piling in. <laughs> Here we go. We're going down. We're going down the Jubilee line now. Oh my goodness me! Escalators and uh, look at them. Look at them. Where are they going? In such a hurry. Running like crazy to get somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, Colin said they're going to the latest disclosure conference. Because when you get there, 
Once you've got there, where do you go after that? I mean, there's nowhere really you can go apart from somewhere else. Okay, we're going down another flight of escalators now. I'll let, I'll let my dear stalker head friend go first. Things he looks like Sherlock Holmes. Let me show you my dear Watson. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, it's like, a, it's like a big factory or something. This is Westminster Station. <coughs> We're really going. It looks like some kind of weird uh, like stage, isn't it? For some, like maybe it's the, it's the Illuminatus trilogy remake, you know? The center of evil and, the, and Whitehall. Yeah, I think this is, this is where the Dili Lama lives. It looks like that sort of place. Westminster Station. We might pop Theresa. We might see Theresa May trying to squeeze on a tube. Oh, I don't. I hope not. <laughs> Do you think she actually ever gets the tube? I don't. So sure you going this way? Okay, eastbound. This is uh, this. Hopefully, this section of the video will be useful for people who want to come and visit London because it's a really, really difficult place to get around. They've got this neat little way of stopping people falling off the platform, which is quite good actually. You can't actually fall off the platform because there are sliding doors which only open. They only open when the train arrives. Pretty good. Yeah. This is an under underground. Going underground, going underground. You know we're at the Jubilee line. And then you see there's people pouring down this escalator. It reminds me of the zombies in Lord of the Rings, or the ghosts. There's a woman there dressed as a banana, collecting money from people. Yeah. All I can say is she's got a peel. Um, well, Colin and I, we decided to take a different route. We decided to go to Dubai instead. So here we are, Colin. We are in downtown Dubai. I'm sure it's supposed to be a bit yeah. warmer there, though. Actually, look, there's a flying car. I think we're on Khorasan. <laughs> This is great. This is the New East End. As you see, A.P. Morgan. As he's a little bit. A oh, J.P. Morgan. I thought it said A.P. I thought it was. J.P. Morgan, that scumbag's built a thing here. <laughs> well, he's not sinking the Titanic. Well, he's building big, large buildings up here. Look. Friend, David Morgan. Oh, no, no relation, I'm sure. No relation, I'm sure. But this is very grand, isn't it? No, I know. Look at these, look at these buildings. Oh, my God. So, in three days, yeah. home of the Illuminati, mate. It is, yeah. Well, do you remember the yeah, uh, thing I did about the, the obelisk? Where's the obelisk? Is it that I think one? It's hiding us. So, so oh, yeah, good. Oh, yeah. We might see it if we. That's the uh, one, Canada, one Canada place, yeah. There's City there, see City Bank. My goodness me. It's lit up like a Christmas tree, mate. Yeah. So, where. Uh, we're going, I think we'll go to Canary Wharf. Where are we going? Here? We're normally, I normally, I normally have to go up to Canary Wharf, but we'll go. All right, as it's, yeah. As it's near Greenwich. We'll, we'll, I haven't been on this one before, so we'll, no. go, we'll go to Heron Key. I've been through this area. I've not actually been to this point, this actual place before. I've not actually got off it. The, the train is cold. And it is actually, God, it's really chilly now. It says underground there. They haven't taken the Christmas decorations down, I see. No. Look at this. It's pretty grand, isn't it? And there's a weird piece of public art. It's just. I'm sure Brian Gerrish would be, have something to say about this. What does it mean? It's something like weird. Uh, it's some sort of half finished Jenga game by the look of things. Torsion 2. Charles Mann. Hey, Torsion Fields! It's the free energy! Dr. Judy Wood! Old, it's, no, that was old Hogan, wasn't it? He talked about Torsion Fields. <laughs> Were you there when we did, you, when we did that comedy thing? Yeah. <laughs> He walked out of the Liverpool show. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, That's it, look at all these places, my goodness me. It's mostly banks. Seems like banks have these big offices. Oh my goodness. So, uh, you, I'll follow you, Colin, because I don't know exactly where we're going. Uh, I'm completely lost here. I just need to ask someone. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to My map is out of date, I think. What does your internet map say? You know, it's funny, you know, the president of the World Bank resigned yesterday. Do you know where Heron Keys is, mate? I'll go, go this way. Oh. Hey, Colin, the head of the World Bank resigned yesterday. I thought it was a bit weird. 
That, that's very unusual. It's almost like the Pope. It's almost like papal abdications. <coughs> he um, he quit, and he hasn't said. What's his name? A Korean guy. He quit. He quit the World Bank. And uh, could be the year of the, the, the collapse of the uh, deep state. Ben. Well, this we would what, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. We were talking about this on Caroline's show uh, last night, um, on the night before. And we were saying, you know, this, I, I, this was breaking news when it happened. And I said, um, does he want to get out of the way before he has to face the charge? He doesn't, if, he, if he's got to face music, he doesn't want it to be on his watch. You know, so maybe like it is the collapse that. of the deep state. I think, I think it's going down there. I have to say, I don't, normally I don't get too optimistic, but the signs and following Q and on and stuff. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Q, I'd have to see what Q has actually been saying about the World Bank resignation because it's not something he predicted, or he, she, or they, or it predicted. No. But I'm um, curious to see what it says. There you go. Well, Q has confirmed Roswell. Yeah. Hasn't he? Uh, there was a bit about MK Ultra yesterday. Oh, I've got to see that. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, I've looked into this and I do think Q and real. I mean, I've looked at both sides because I know Kev Baker's totally against it. He thinks it's a scam. I'm not so sure. All right, guys, uh, oh, we've got to go all the way up there now. So, uh, let's just head up to the station. We've got oh, the, yeah. It's up this big bathtub thing. Yeah, it's all very strange and modern, isn't it? Postmodern. Oh, 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 okay. Right, let me just get me. Right, please touch in there. All right, here you go. Transport yeah, 371. I've got enough. Yeah, I might have to. Only seven second charge you, Ben, before they. Uh... I hope so. I mean, uh, they've. Uh, I'll just have to top it up for the journey home. I tell you why. You know, it's the change when you get off the Circle and District line. Oh, you notice this? You have like a massive change in architecture, in style. Oh, yeah, well, it gets it's bigger and more sort of concretey and more brutalist. I definitely really see that, I really, really do. Anyway, we've got to get on board those robots, haven't we? The robots are coming. Yeah. Do you remember AI, the last... The AI in train. Yeah. yeah, do you remember the last video I made? <laughs> <laughs> with, with Karen Douglas, I talked about the robots, yeah. So, uh, so Colin, it's the reveal. What does it say on there? This is actually, uh, I'll probably get lynched for wearing this, but it's uh, COL, which is actually, oh. this, is the, this is the colours of uh, Colombia. Colombia, all oh, right. Of course, it's a play on words of my name, so... Uh, Cole, oh, of course, yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. So Colin always wears a different football jersey. If I wore time. that after England, did England, they knocked him out, didn't they? Yeah. On, uh, I think so, yeah. Oh, remember, right, yeah. Was it oh yeah, it was, it was penalty shootout, which England won for a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so um, I don't, you know, I think people have forgotten about that anyway, but yeah, you're right, I am wearing a little football shirt, so. Oh, cool. I like, I'm suitably attired in a UFO Truth Magazine t-shirt. I'm not wearing my disguise today, I'm going completely open so they'll all know who I am. I'm wearing a suitably rebellious t-shirt. Full disclosure, Ben. That's yeah. Full disclosure. <laughs> full disclosure of me. So Andy Lewis will know immediately. He'll, I wonder if I'll put a smile on his miserable face when he sees me. Wow. <laughs> he'll think, I've got a weirdo here. This guy's going to be trouble, <laughs> do you reckon? I think you'll be all right. It's going to be an interesting talk, I mean. Yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, Cheers, mate. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, he believes in fire gnomes, which, mm. you know, I for one, you know, welcome our fire gnome brothers and sisters. So mm. uh, I don't, and he, he believes in reincarnation and things, so. As long as they're not our fire, fire gnome overlords, uh, well, I'm no. absolutely fine, I think. Yeah. It's so cold outside, we could do with a few fire gnomes in here. Keep oh, I know, they might be good things to have around, yeah. Oh, no, exactly. It's really bitterly cold this evening, yeah. So, um, the beast from the east is here, so um, bring on the fire gnomes, I say. Oh, the fire gnomes, <laughs> and um, yeah, looking forward to what he has to say about the style of schools and that. Yeah. Um, Should be interesting, and um, I've got a thing that's going to be controversial. I'm, I'm not going to say anything at the time, but I'll probably have a rant afterwards. So, um, oh. I mean, the clip you sent me was all about, um, sort of, from a humanist, I believe, and he was saying stuff like, you know, he was saying it's all nonsense and stuff, but there's no more nonsense than Christianity and things like that. And, it, and you know, the clip I saw is like they were honoring, honoring the planet and, you know, but we're all stars and, you know, I just think it sounds, I mean, it was a vague reference to being racist, wasn't there? Which is, you know, wasn't, yeah. but I mean, it seems like they were just picking through stuff to try and pin on pin on him for you know having a, you know which is something he yeah. doesn't actually talk about much himself. But well, to be fair, considering the time he lived, he lived in the uh, yeah. late 19th, early 20th century. Uh, this idea of that, um, you know racial differences and things like that 
of people being inferior or superior was completely mainstream, it was completely normal. Everybody yeah. believed that. Yeah. And yeah. so that when they talk in hushed voices about Germany in the early 20th century, talking about the superiority of the white race, you know, in these hushed tones, that was a very biased news article. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I probably won't include the news article in this film because I'll probably get done for copyright, but. Um, Basically, it's, it's a news. It's, I'll, I'll say more about. I, I'll say a bit about it in the introduction. I'll say more later. But uh, basically, see, I think we'll this is um, this is another example of the uh, the humanist and atheist skeptics. You know, when they switch to the prosecution beds, they're all in favour of free speech for them, yeah, but yeah. not for the rest of us. You see, they can be as dictatorial as anyone else, and they have a belief system too, which they need to defend. But if people don't like it. People, if they think that someone's dip, dipping into the public purse. You know, which he doesn't agree with them, they don't like it. And of course, if someone set up a humanist school, I'd be absolutely fine with that. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't exactly. try, I'd be quite happy to have it state funded. I wouldn't bother me. One rule for one. Yeah. yeah. I know. We'll see, we'll see what he has to say. I mean, for, for us, it's like another away match. You know, yeah. we've, we've trekked across London to see the skeptics. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if they'd be so gracious to attend one of our believer type events. But, uh, they do occasionally, very rarely. Very rarely but, yeah. but when they do, they tend to. I've read their reviews and they, they come up really disgusted and hor horrified. Yeah, no way. Oh, well, well, anyway, um, we're going to have some dinner and then we're going to head for the venue. So that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it be fun. Lions Den, I think. We are close to. Is that the Star and Garter pub there? We've gone a slightly different way this time than usual. But we are actually going to go in and we're going to face. The enemy of the Steiner schools. What's the, what the hell is that? Do you see them? <laughs> is that that window? We need a Battersea power station, aren't we? I don't remember, I don't remember them being there. there. I don't remember them being there. It might, it might have just manifested. Yeah, I think so. I maybe, they, maybe they did. Maybe it's like Independence Day or the arrival. Ooh. And here we are, the back of the old Star and Garter pub. So, Colin, um, let's let's head inside. Let's do this thing. Yes, do it, man. Let's do it. We're just leaving the, um, the the Star and Garter now, being Colin. <coughs> it's, a bit, it's chilly and cold. Colin, now that was interesting, though, wasn't it? Um, yeah, what do you think of all that? Well, I mean, uh, it did seem to be coming from it from his own sort of biased opinion mm. about schools, and um, it, was, it was quite interesting. We just heard a bit of the question and answer session with um, Dave Barrett, who's actually a contributor of the 14 times. Yeah, and that's some, we met someone we sort yeah, of heard of, haven't we? Yeah, a sociologist, and um, mm. he did feel like he, had, he was making ad hominem attacks and things about Steiner and yeah. uh, these other schools, I think the Waldorf schools? Was the it? Waldorf schools are the Steiner schools. Yeah, oh, OK. But the, um, the thing about it is, um, basically, Andy, Andy Lewis's position is the Steiner schools are, are very pernicious and they're, they're teaching, they've got, they're very bad for children. They're teaching them nonsense, they're teaching them evil, and they have to be stamped out, and they must be funded with state funds. But funny enough, as this happened when he spoke in Oxford, actually, mm -hmm. I'll put links in the description box to people, to the video I made, and to the article, <coughs> the article I wrote. But he did speak in Oxford, Andy Lewis. And again, th this time, there were a couple of people who know a bit more about Steiner schools, including a former student, a young man who actually was a pupil there. But what he what he said was very interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he was yeah more secondary. He didn't really do the primary sort yeah. of thing because there's all this sort of stuff about they like, sort of encourage people not to was it read or stuff like yeah. that, until the age of seven and things like this, mm. um, which I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I mean, I'm not an expert on Steiner and that, but yeah. as for promoting ideas like uh, Atlantis, I mean, if it's good enough for Plato, then. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's one I of the things. Really yeah. The problem with that land is existing, yeah. but maybe I'm just one. One of the things yeah. that Stein, one of the things that are popular about Steiner schools, is that they don't teach children to read as early as they do in just in normal schools. Now, to be honest, things when I was like five, when they, when I they start teaching kids in normal schools in five. Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, I uh, I didn't I wasn't interested in reading. What I found out, I actually didn't learn to read properly until I learned to enjoy reading. It was exactly the same with my daughter Louisa. If the only way any child is going to be a good reader is if they can learn to enjoy reading. Yeah. Simple fact, it's true. <coughs> Give them a mm. Harry Potter book or something. Like yeah, exactly. This is why huh? well, Harry Potter actually has improved child literacy, I believe. <laughs> <coughs> For that reason, it's actually. <coughs> <coughs> 
because um, because it's something that children love, it's actually improved child literacy. Funny thing about Harry Potter is also encouraged Latin, learning the learning of Latin, which almost was exactly. almost abolished. It almost felt they did away completely in British schools. Is back. It's increased enormously because of Harry Potter, the Latin spells that Harry recites. And I used to like have, read like the Magic Faraway Tree. My mum, hmm. my mum used to read that. Hmm. That's one of the books I remember growing up. Yeah. When I remember, I used to, when I learned to love reading, I became a good reader. I was Thomas the Tank Engine for me. Yeah. Tom Topsy and Tim, Thomas the Tank Engine. Of Farthing Wood, I remember mm. reading that. I remember the first book I ever read all the way through from beginning to end. It was a Thomas the Tank Engine book. Brilliant. I loved them. Yeah. I loved Thomas and Gordon and Tintin, Edward. And Tintin for me. Tintin, oh, I love Tintin, yeah. So, Tintin Comics, we're going Gastrix the Gaul. Absolutely superb. So, um. <coughs> But the point is, I can... Well, the interesting thing about a lot of these things is they involve mysteries and, hmm. you know, adventure. And <laughs> who doesn't want to get involved in mystery and adventure and solving mysteries, you know? I shot something caught in my throat. Yeah, um... There's also a point that, um... From what I sound, what goes on at Steiner schools sounds like great fun. I mean, they, yeah. they, 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 paint, they paint lovely pictures. Yeah. They uh, do all kinds of artwork and play and drama yeah. and dancing the, the eurythmy this this anthroposophical dance sounds really great yeah use like bright colors and he made a point about they're not allowed to use a black crayon <coughs> i think I, I don't know if that was true i think he was trying to make some sort of racial connotation yeah. there, but, uh, i think he's yeah. trying to build on a previous point he made which are rudolf stein was a racist and therefore they were teaching the children racism at the school but then that's uh, <laughs> the young chap uh, pointed out that his eurythmy teacher was black. Well, I think Dave Barrett came up with, you know, saying that, well, you know, he accused, he, the, I mean, the speaker said he was a barn pot or crack pot. I mean, this is quite offensive language, really, because can you prove someone's a crack pot or yeah. whatever? I mean, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this is typical sceptics. What Andy Lewis is suffering from is the fact that he is trapped in a belief system and doesn't realise he is. Yeah. He's in what Stephen Law calls the intellectual black hole. He doesn't know he's in it. I've done an entire video called Skeptics 2018. Do watch it. It's four and a half hours, but I discuss this. <coughs> <coughs> now, the, I think um, Steiner's views on race are, I think, are the most controversial element of this because he says yeah. he, he believes in reincarnation, as we all do, but he has a specific view of reincarnation, is that in that we. Albeit at that time at the end yeah, of the 19th century. Immature souls are incarnated as Negroids, Africans, black people. Then they eventually, if they live good lives as black people, they develop into Orientals, Asiatics, yeah. uh, people we would call today uh, East Asians. Then eventually, <coughs> they get onto the gold podium. <laughs> they become white people, well, especially blonde, blue-eyed Aryans. Right? Yeah, but it's important, I suppose, to realise that when Steiner I mean, the thing is, Steiner was a, he was a brilliant man, but he wasn't perfect. He made mistakes, he got something wrong, and he lived in a society where yeah, that idea was... Yeah, he was ahead was of his time, and, he, and he, yeah. it, it may seem now that he's, maybe some of the things he said was a bit of out of touch, but he still, you know, he, he was bringing forth ideas, and he was dealing with spiritual issues. Yeah. I think this is the main crux of the whole thing, that he was bringing forth spiritual issues, and I think for so many thousands of years, man has not really had an idea of spirituality being taught. And he, he was really, really keen on that. Yeah. And he, he learned, he, I read two of his books, he's very interesting. But he lived, the era he lived, his, his lifestyle, his lifestyle basically straddled the turn of the 19th, 20th century. And back in that time period, if you asked anyone, they would have said, yeah, these ideas were completely mainstream. The idea, if you asked anyone, you could ask, probably Charles Darwin would have said this, H.G. Wells certainly would have said this, is the white man if superior to the black man? They would have said, yes, absolutely, biologically, he is superior. They would have said this. Now, it may be wrong, it may be false, but it was still widely believed at the time Steiner lived. Because these people and, were indoctrinated to certain levels themselves, weren't they? Yeah. And you've got to ask yourself, if Steiner lived today, he probably wouldn't think that. No. But it's true, I mean, like... And he'd probably be a black person today. <laughs> he might be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, it's... Uh, Thing about this, uh, Colin, you know, um, it, as you said, that they was, he lived in a time when spiritualism 
was really being explored in detail, spiritual issues, parapsychology, yeah. psychical research was really yeah, having its heyday. Yeah. It was shut down by the Illuminati over the course of the early 20th century because they didn't want us knowing this stuff. No. But there was something more than ourselves that we weren't just useless lots yeah, of flesh which exactly. like, lived and died and that was it basically. Yeah. And we mentioned the uh, Helena Blavatsky and the, uh, the, the Theosophical Movement. Um, I know that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle had a lot of contact with these kinds of people. But, and, yeah. uh, but I mean, uh, this, this is a, basically an early 21st century sceptic believer seeing something that he thinks is nonsense being promoted by people he never met and had who hadn't lived lives he had no idea about and indeed it's, it's interesting that he, he was challenged in the q a the q a was the best part yeah, because yeah, yeah. The, the people in the q a took him up on his ideas they said look yeah, i went to the school yeah. Yeah. we had a exactly. we had a, a starting school pupil and your your mate the doctor of sex or sex <laughs> We were yeah, a bit of a joke about that. Mr. Mm. Dave V. Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it's interesting, I haven't really seen that sort of uh, <coughs> stuff before. Uh, um, so, you know, so it was quite, it's quite interesting, actually. You know. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, so he was, and there was a lady at the front as well who's also worked in Steiner schools, their Steiner education, and she challenged him on some of the factual issues he raised. Yeah. Because this guy's trying to get the Steiner school shut down by by the Inspector of Education, Ofsted, the Inspector of Education. Now, so this is another example of sceptics wanting to control non-sceptic lives. They claim to be into free speech, human rights... Are we, are we going to cut your sock? Yeah. Is it, it this way? way? I think so. And um, they claim to be into free speech, human rights, all that sort of thing. I thought, it was, is it down there? Not down there? Uh, is this the right way? Yeah, I'll work it. Yeah, we, we walked on here, didn't we? So. They claim to be in favour of free speech and human rights, but you know what? You know what they. But as I explain in my video, which I'll put a link in the description box to, only if you're a sceptic. They don't want it for other people. They want it for them. They want it for their own, their own um, position. They they believe. They say things like, "Oh, we're, you know, atheism is not a religion any more than." The off switch is a TV channel, and it's completely false. I caught them out on it. I've caught them out saying, "I want to indoctrinate my child into non-belief. Indoctrinate her into non-belief." They are. They have. They just don't understand their own position. They don't have any idea. That they don't have this power of introspection that most other people have—the ability to see themselves as others would see them, to look to examine their own position from the outside. They can't do it. Where are we going? We get, you better get your map out. So we're just trying to find the uh, DLR station. I'm sure it's in that arcade. So we, we're, we're in Greenwich, which is actually a very, very nice part of East London. It's just very pleasant. That's the old uh, college there, the Greenwich Academy of College. And um, we're just trying to find our way around now. But I mean, I, I tell you, I wonder, if I'd gone to a Steiner school, would my education have been different? I don't know. I mean, I, I know that I went to the Findhorn community in Scotland, and they've got like the, the Moray Steiner Walfalls, Waldorf School there. They're not afraid to use the name Steiner. It's down there. There was that little arcade, yeah. Um, they're not afraid to use the, the name Steiner. Um, but there was a guy there who was saying, I mean, he appears in this documentary which you can get on YouTube. And he's saying, I was uneducatable. I'd love to... Colin? This way, this way, this way. Is it? Okay, it's definitely this way. I'd love to have gone to Steiner School. And to be honest, I mean, I, I myself was in a similar position. I and mean, let's face it, Colin, yeah. would you say that the normal school system is one of three thought, education <laughs> and development? Would well, you? this is the point that the lady made as well. Mm. But, I mean, there's just as much bullying. Because this guy referred to bullying and yeah. things like this. And, you know, <coughs> having the same teacher. I don't know if they, they do have the same teachers. I don't really. Yeah, that wouldn't be a good thing if they do have the same. Te I think it does help if you have different teachers over over a day. But yeah, certainly the schools I went to keep going. Okay. Um, comprehensive school, and you, you know, I didn't really learn. Yeah. I didn't really learn. I didn't learn anything there until I started studying UFOs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, I actually my schooling was pretty much a waste of time. Well, I wouldn't say completely. I mean, is it Cutty Sark this way, Colin? 
Um, We're going to Kai Sark, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, but it's, but it should be... It's definitely Kai It should be up there to the left. Oh, really? Maybe it's up there. It was in this, we, we, we was in this stuff. Arcade. Are you sure? Are you... It might be just the other <coughs> Kelly, there's an arc. We went into an arcade, remember? Yeah. So we're trying to find the tube station. The thing about it is, like, also, um, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, we went into this arcade, and there's an arcade back there. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because there's an arcade back here, Colin. No, no, yeah, it's around the corner. Yeah, all right, then. <coughs> um, and if you think about it, right, the, what's the worst... You mentioned bullying, and he said that bullying was allowed to go unchecked in Steiner schools. Well, what about, um, what about boarding schools? What about the English boarding schools where, where the elite are educated? Well, I mean, you talk about what happens, what happens in the boarding schools, in the elite boarding schools, where children, where the elites, the uh, the future leaders and governors and pe government and people like that, where they all go to. Well, that's what it's like. You know, the continuous stream of sexual abuse. Yeah. You know, you you get buggered every day by bigger, richer boys, <laughs> and, it's, and that is allowed to go unchecked. In fact, it's encouraged. Yeah. No, true. They get they can't tell tales. You know, you've got to take it to the head of your house. And he's probably one of the worst abusers. See, see what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> Connie, are you I'm lost? Sorry, I'm sending it to them. I'm Connie, are you sure we just don't need to go in that arcade back there? I think it's. Oh. Should we try oh, going? It's showing over there. So why is the, it? What the Cutty Sark Station? The actual Cutty Sark Station. Yeah. Well, should we should we just follow that then? Let's follow it and see what it takes us. We are going, we are using GPS, sorry, yeah. Big Brother technology, to find our way back to the, to the station. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Oh, that's, that's it, yeah. Oh, oh that's it, look, yeah, there's the arcade. Oh, we found it, Colin. He was right all along. Through, through like them <coughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm sorry I doubted you. No, I okay, then, so... Uh, so, basically, I, th I would say, generally, Andy Lewis is a... Um, a person, I think, who is a typical of that who has a distorted view of what he does because he believes he believes he's an atheo materialo skeptic, and atheo materialo skeptics, or atheo skeptico materialists. Have it. All right, we're going to go into the DLR station now. So we'll talk to you, talk more about that later. Pretty late now. We're in this big brutalist concrete dungeon which is Canary Wharf tube station yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, well thanks very much for coming nice, here today right. well, um, that's that'd be nice to set up. I, was, I was talking earlier I was saying we should set up a rival movement called Believers in the Pub Believers right, in the Pub Believers in the Pub rival the skeptics in the pub which you know we need balance and you know everything needs to have <laughs> so, um, so maybe if anyone's else interested maybe you can yeah so you know I think it can be done you know if Although, the skeptics have their day out then the believers should have their day out yeah but would, would the skeptics try and shut it down yeah. that's the thing would they actually visit it, it seems well, well they wouldn't probably a lot of them wouldn't visit would but they're travelling across the Greenwich on a cold Wednesday night yeah. I suppose the thing is that <laughs> we've seen a side like I said we've seen a side of the skeptics and I think it's embodied very much in Andy Lewis which is that they do not like they actually feel comfortable with the idea that there are people who have a different worldview from them especially relating to education and they want to, they, and they have a right because they, I mean, let's face it, it's not just skeptics who pay taxes, is it? No, All of us do. All of us got a right. Yeah. So if they want to set up a skeptic school, I think this is our train. Yeah. If they want to set up a skeptic school, what right would they would they would object to that? They say, yeah, go for it. And you know, I would do the same because I believe in the freedom of the right to choose. I really do. I believe in our right. Don't sit on the chip. So I mean that's what I believe, you see. Um, so Colin, I, was, I say, uh, I say, I'd ask Andy Lewis yeah. to to consider that, to think about that, you know, Definitely. think about how look look into the mirror and see yourself. Look, are you the, are you not doing the very same thing? Are you not being a hypocrite? Are you not doing the very same thing? Yeah. I think you, you have your own cult. Out a bit at the end of the thing, so. Yeah. Interesting. See, if, if the Steiner schools are a cult, then maybe the skeptic movement is a cult of some kind. You know what I mean? And, and how many operatives maybe have they got working for, um, you know, like, um, yeah. enforcing, you know, NWO agenda? 
that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Colin. It's all right. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. Thanks Over for that taking is. part in this one. Thank you. Over and out. Now, I meant to film a little bit more um, when I was on my way home, but I was just so tired. I fell asleep on the coach. Uh, and there's a few more things I should say about this particular subject, uh, this issue of Rudolf Steiner. Now, I can't go into all the details about Rudolf Steiner because he's such an incredibly complex person. But again, back to the books that I've read about him. I only mentioned one of them in the intro, and that was the one about biodynamic, biodynamic farming. But I've read a second book about him. I think it's this one. This uh, book here is, I, I'm not actually 100% sh sure this is the actual book, it's the, the Incarnation of Araman. Um, I think it might be this one, um, I don't remember, but it was one he wrote in 1917, and um, it was basically based on a lecture he gave at the same time, which is sort of around the same time, where he talks about uh, an esoteric group of people a group of a secret society of people who are channeling dark forces they're basically channeling what you might call satanic forces or black magic black mag black magical entities and these people are in government these people are essentially p in senior positions in government and senior positions in business banking the media authorities in education etc etc <coughs> now um you may think that that might be a bit paranoid of course I mean, when you think about what was going on in the world when he wrote the book and did the lecture I mean the, the great war was raging around his shoulders uh, everywhere which must have that war changed the world like no other before or since and he was affected by it very very much being in Austria he'd been in the heart of it um, but when I read the book it's astonishingly similar to what many many other much more recent authors have stated such as David Icke, Brian Desbra, and other people who've, who've exp expressed themselves through other media, such as Alex Jones, um, and um, Anthony J. Hilda, and people like that. The what Steiner is actually saying here is that what he also says is that, in a sense, that the people that a lot of these people in the elite circles, through their occult practice, have in a sense been possessed by these entities what we he didn't use this term but I would use the term demonic entities demons they're monsters the the jinn or the uh, archons archons is a, a more accurate term it's the one that's used most likely nowadays although um, Rudolf Steiner didn't use these words so he was he was kind of the David Icke of his time and I thought I'd bring that in into the whole issue. Now, um, he what again? I want to come back to his background about the time when he lived. As I said, he was born in 1861, died in 1925. He lived in a very different world to you and me. Now, I'm not just talking about the racism angle. As I've already explained, I think he's been falsely accused by Andy Lewis and other people. I think it's like I say, it's Godwin's law again. He's evil, he's a Nazi. Interestingly, Rudolf Steiner was banned by the Nazis his, when they came to power. All his books were, were outlawed. Um, you know, he, his ideas on race are pretty, were pretty mainstream at that time. As I said, it's, a, it's an understandable mistake that he made. He shouldn't be demonised for it. He should not be uh, made out to be some kind of monster because he had these ideas. Um, but I want to... It's not just that. It's the fact that he, he lived through a very, very interesting time indeed. Is that it was the golden age of of psychical research, and and this of course is something I've talked about a lot with with um, Helen Duncan. But really, in a sense, Helen Duncan came after that. In fact, by the time the twentieth century dawned, things were already dying down in the er in the area of psychical research. Now, of course, the skeptics will say, "Well, that's because they couldn't find anything. They were studying something that was non-existent." They, did, they eventually settled on the null hypothesis, Ben. That's why it all died down. No. I'm absolutely convinced that's not the case. And if for more details, go and look into the, in the description box. Look at the link to my skeptics video. It's a long video, but it goes into all this in detail. And it'll, it completely and utterly disproves that whole idea. Check that out. Um, I think that um, there's, there may be political, economic 
social and psychological reasons why psychical research died down after this after its golden age. But for those who lived within it, like Steiner, it was an incredibly heady time. There were, people were literally, but really believed that they were on the point of proving the existence of the afterlife. And indeed, I think they, I think they did more or less. And again, if you if you if you re reassess the original research, I think they did. Um, so that's that's his background. I think that is why he became what he did. And I, I don't believe. You know, Andy Lewis portrays him as some kind of cult leader, some kind of um, demigod. He says that anthroposophy is a revealed. It's a, it's a revealed spirituality. I don't think it is. I mean, okay, I'm not an expert on this, but I've, to, I've talked to Terry Boardman, who is an expert on this, and he he doesn't believe that Rudolf Steiner was a kind of god on earth. He sees him as a, as a philosopher, as a very wise man, a man capable of making mistakes. And as we've seen, he has made mistakes. But he was a, a mortal man who had an astonishing insights through his research, through his spiritual science, which was a term he coined. Anyway, I think that's all I can really say on the matter, because if I've, I'm sure if I could research more into Rudolf Steiner and do like a three-hour video, indeed Terry Boardman has done some amazing ones, um, the, what the, he spoke at Ian R. Crane's Alternative View Conferences, and if you go to the link in the description box, you'll see my reviews of his talk. Um, he'd be a good guy to get on her panel with radio, actually. Anyway, until next time, that's the, I'll probably do another video on Rudolf Steiner, but it'll probably be a much longer one if I look into it in detail. <laughs> but um, this is the latest instalment of Hapanmo TV. I hope you've enjoyed it. More coming very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Hospital Porters, pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. <laughs>